In this lecture, I'm going to talk about regular expressions. Um, this lecture is uh, actually unique in the series of lectures that uh, I've done so far in that it's not actually a lecture about R. Um, I won't be talking about any R in this lecture at all. I'm just going to be talking about regular expressions, which is, which is a general idea uh, that applies to many different programming languages, not just R. Um, some of the, the programming languages that are probably most popular for uh, using regular, regular expressions are, are languages like Perl or Python, uh, which are kind of built around these types of things. So uh, what are regular expressions? Uh, the basic idea behind regular expressions is that you want to kind of, you want to be able to represent uh, language in certain ways, and, uh, or, and in particular, uh, language that you'll find in text files, um, you want to be able to, to kind of parse or search through uh, the, the text to look for certain types of things. Um, and in our context, you know, we're going to want to look through text files um, or text in general to look for data or things that we're going to be interesting that we can that we think are interesting that we can turn into data. And so uh, regular expressions can be thought of as a combination of things called literals and things called meta characters. Um, so literals are, if you want to draw an analogy with, uh, you know, natural language, for example, like English, um, literals are, are, you can think of as being the text, uh, like the words on a page or the words on this slide, for example, are are all literal words, um, and they and they and the literals form the words of the language. While the meta characters are essentially, you know, they define the grammar. And so you think of a word like uh, like verb or noun; those are words that describe an entire class of words. Uh, and so um, and so they're in some sense they're kind of meta characters for the English language. Um, so regular expressions uh, for programming languages have a rich set of meta characters that can be used and combined in a number of ways uh, to describe a, a whole class, whole classes of, of words or literals. So the simplest pattern that you can create uh, using regular expressions is a literal. And a literal is just a word, it's a string of characters together. Um, so for example, the word nuclear here uh, is a literal. A string of characters, um, and you might want to search through a text file and match every line in the file that has the word nuclear in it. Okay, so here are a couple of examples um, the, of text of t lines of text um, that have the word nuclear in it. And even though some of these text uh, lines of text are, are on multiple lines, you can uh, that's just I've just done that just because otherwise they wouldn't fit on the screen. So just imagine that each block of text is on a single line. Um, so the first one has the word nuclear blast. The second one has nuclear weapons. Um, then the fourth one here has nuclear physics. Uh, and then the last one here is, is, is says nuclear people. So all of these lines of text have the word nuclear in it. And they're all spelled exactly the same way. And they're all in all lowercase letters, so there's no deviation from the word that we were looking for. Uh, so that's how a literal expression works. Here's another example of a literal uh, expression that you could use to match with text. Um, and so a, a couple here are a couple of lines of text here that have the word Obama. Now keep in mind that uh, the spelling of the word here, capital O, B lowercase b a m a. That's a very it's very important. Uh, it's all uh, if you look if you use this as a regular expression and search through text using whatever software you're going to be using, um, and uh, you will only match lines that have the have the literal phrase spelled in exactly this way with this combination of capital and lowercase letters. Um, so um, I by the way I should mention that uh, I, I'm not going to talk about software in this lecture, but I will talk about the, the functions in, in R that you'll use to actually do this kind of searching uh, through text uh, in the next lecture on regular expressions. So this is another example of a literal string uh, and, uh, and these are lines of text that would match it. So the simplest patterns for regular expressions consist of only of literal. So you're looking for specific words, um, and um, and, a, and a match will occur if a sequence of literal if the, if these literals occur anywhere in the text that's being tested. So any, anywhere in the line of text, um, and so. Uh, but, but what if you want to look for something that's slightly more complicated? For example, you might look for the word Clinton with a capital C or Clinton with a lowercase c. Or maybe uh, someone slightly misspells the word, maybe drops the N, but you want to look for that too because they're probably talking about the same thing. So now I've got a class uh, of, um, of words, not just a single word, and I want to be able to represent this class of words 
um, using some sequence of uh, some expression, and that's what that's where regular expressions start to show their strength. And so, in general, we need uh, a ways to express things like white space word boundaries, uh, sets of literals, so classes of words or or, or phrases. Um, we want to know whether we're at the beginning of the or at the end of a line, uh, and we might want to specify things like alternatives, so search for war or peace, uh, rather than just search for war or just search for peace. Um, and that's where meta characters come into play. So the first meta character that we'll talk about here is the carrot here, uh, and the carrot is something that can re that can represent the start of a line. So if I say carrot, I think, uh, what will this search for? So this will search for the the word, um, the phrase I think, or I should, more specifically, it'll search for the phrase I space and then T H I N K in lowercase letters. Um, at the beginning of the line only. So here we have five, uh, five different lines of text, all of which start with the phrase "I think." Um, so even the, so, if you had a, a line of text where "I think" occurred somewhere in the middle of the phrase or of the line, um, that would not match this regular expression. So this is a way to say, "I want to, I want to match a certain string of text that only occurs at the beginning of a line." Uh, the dollar sign uh, is used to represent the end of a line. So this is the opposite of the caret. And so if you want to, for example, look for some text that, that ex looks for a line of text that ends in a certain word, for example, the word morning, um, then you can use the morning dollar sign and you'll look for, and it will match lines of text that end with the word morning. So you can see all these lines of text here uh, end with the word morning. Another way we can describe um, classes of characters or words is with, ca with, with character classes. And character classes are denoted by the square brackets here. Um, so for example, um, it is often the case that we may want to specify a bunch of characters that can match in any given place. So for example, here I've got the word bush, B-U-S-H. Um, but for each of the letters, I'm willing to accept either a capital letter or a lowercase version of that letter. So here I've got the first character class is capital B or lowercase b followed by a capital U or lowercase u, followed by a capital S or lowercase s, and, or, and then and a capital H or lowercase h. So this allows for a, a variety of different spellings uh, of the word bush. Um, and so and, in, in, in cases where people may be misspelling the word or maybe forget to capitalize or things like that. Um, and so oh, these are a couple of lines of text that will match this expression. And you can see that, uh, that the word bush is spelled in a variety of ways, sometimes with uh, uppercase uh, b, sometimes with lowercase b, etc. And so uh, that's, the, that's how we can use a character class to specify a variety of types of letters uh, that can be matched at the same time. Uh, so now we can start combining uh, regular expressions uh, or meta characters uh, to create kind of more powerful expressions. So here I've got a caret and then followed by a character class. So what is this saying? This is saying that I want to match um, any phrase that starts with the, the starts with the words I am, where I can be lowercase or uppercase. Um, so here are some phrases um, or lines of text that match this regular expression here. So they notice that they all start with the words I am, but sometimes it's lowercase and sometimes it's uppercase. You can also specify ranges of letters uh, using the, the square bracket character class. Uh, so for example, if you have A-Z in the square bracket, that means I want you can match any letter between A to Z. So any, any letter basically in the English alphabet, uh, that's lowercase. And if you have capital A to Z, that means uppercase letters in the English alphabet. And if you have A to Z lowercase and A to Z uppercase, then that means I can take any uppercase or any lowercase letter. Um, and so the order here doesn't matter. Um, so now if I combine, say, the caret with the class 0-9, so that means any digit between 0 and 9, uh, followed by any letter between A to Z, uppercase or lowercase, um, so this reg regular expression says basically I want, a, I, I want a line of text that starts with a number and, and is followed with a letter. Uh, so here are a couple lines of text that, that match this expression. And you can see that they always, every line starts with a single number and then is followed by a letter. And so that's what the expression is asking for. 
So uh, we talked about the caret already, um, and the caret can be used uh, when in a regular expression to indicate the beginning of a line. However, if you use the caret inside of a character class or inside a square bracket, it takes on a different meaning. So if you use the caret um, inside a character class, it, it's used to indicate uh, kind of a negation or you want the idea that you want to match characters that are not in this class, uh, and so. If you look at this expression here, you'll see in the character class I've got a caret and then a question mark and a period, and then followed by a dollar sign. So what does this mean? So this means I want to match lines of text that do not end in a, in a question mark or a period. Okay. So if you look at the lines of text that match this, you see that none of these lines of text have a question mark or a period at the end. Uh, one of these lines has an exclamation point at the end, but that's okay because it wasn't uh, in the character class. And so, um, and then the last line here does have a question mark in it, but that's okay because it's not at the end of the line. So the period um, is used to refer to any character. So it's a, it's a special meta character that can be used to reference anything. So for example, if you have a expression 9.11, or more specifically, 9 period 1, 1, uh, what will that match? So what that expression is saying is that you have a literal 9 uh, followed by this period meta character, followed by two 1s, which are both literals. And so what does that mean? That means I can match 9 and then anything, uh, and then followed by a 1, 1. So here are a couple of lines of text that do match uh, that uh, expression. So for example, in the first one you have 9 dash 11, in the second line you have 9 uh, slash 11. Uh, in the third one here you've got an IP address and you see in the middle there is a 9 with a literal period uh, 11. Uh, in the fourth line I've got a 9 a colon followed by uh, 11. And then um, in the last one I've got a whole string of digits and you'll see embedded in that long string of digits uh, there is a 9 followed by two ones. And one of the things that's special about the period is that the period can match uh, it can match nothing. So it can it can match a character, but it it can also match uh, nothing, and so nothing is is one of the possible sets of things that it can match. So that's why nine one one will also match that expression. So the uh, this the. Uh, the vertical line here, which is sometimes called a pipe or a solidus, um, can be used as in regular expressions to indicate alternatives. Uh, and so, for example, if you want to match a word uh, or another word, you can use the uh, pipe to do that. So here I have flood or fire. So if I use this expression on, on lines of text, if that line of text has the word flood or fire in it, then it will it will satisfy the match. So both flood and fire are literals, and so they have to match exactly, but you can match either word. So you can see that um, these lines of text do match that expression. So for example, the first line we have fire wire, so fire matches there. Uh, the second line has global flood, so flood matches there. The second line just has the word fire by itself, and the last one has the word flood in it. So all of these lines will match that expression. Uh, you can have you can put a bunch of alternatives together. So here I've got flood, earthquake, hurricane, and cold fire. So if a line of text has any one of these words in it, it will satisfy. It will match the expression. Uh, and so here are a couple lines of text that do match that. Um, and now, the alter if you use the pipe or the solidus to, al to express alternatives, they don't just have to be literal uh, expressions. You can have uh, regular expressions uh, as the alternative. So here I've got a regular expression that says, um, uh, on the one hand, I can have um, the word good at the beginning of the line, or I can have the word bad. And then with for either good or bad, they can start with a capital or a lowercase letter. And so here are a couple of lines that match this expression. Um, and so you notice that in the uh, in the fourth line, um, it doesn't have it doesn't match the word good at the beginning, uh, but it does match the word bad somewhere in the middle. Similarly, the last line uh, it doesn't match the word good in the beginning, but it does match the word bad towards the end. Uh, but then the first three lines match the word good in the beginning, so they uh, match right away. Um, so. One of the things that you might want to do, for example, in the previous expression, I said uh, it said match the word good at the beginning or the word bad, uh, but you might want to just um, match the word good or bad at the beginning. And so here I've wrapped the good or bad in the parentheses and then put the caret outside that. So now when you look at the lines of text that match this expression, you'll see that both the good and the bad word have to be at the beginning of the line and not just the word good.
Um, so the we talked about the use. Um, well, no, sorry, we we we're going to talk about the word the use of the word the use of the question mark here, uh, and the use of the and the question mark here can indicate that an expression um, is optional. So, for example, here here I'm looking for the for the phrase George W. Bush. Um, now. A couple of, I've combined some character classes and an optional element. So here the G can be lowercase or uppercase, the first G that is. Uh, the B and Bush could be lowercase or uppercase. Uh, the W, uh, which is the middle initial, can be lowercase or uppercase and, and then followed by a period. So notice that here uh, I'm using the period, but I'm not using it to indicate any character like I did before. And the reason that I, I know that is because I've preceded it with a backslash. So this is sometimes called escaping a character, because because sometimes um, you don't want to use a meta character as a meta character. You want to use it as a literal character. So sometimes you're searching for something like a period, and you don't want that to be interpreted as a meta character. And so you 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 can precede it with a backslash, and that will tell the interpreter to say, okay, I'm not looking for for the period as a meta character, I'm looking for an actual period. Um, so here the expression says uh, I'm looking for the word George followed by a space, followed by a W, followed by a period, and then followed by a space, and then followed by the word Bush. And the question mark may, means that the thing that's in the parentheses uh, is optional. And so I don't have to have a W in the middle there, uh, but if I have a W there, then it's fine. So you can see that the first line matches the word George Bush, all lowercase. The second line report matches the word George W. Bush, um, and then the last line matches the, the, the word George and then Bushes. Uh, even though uh, the second word is Bushes, that does match the expression because it, it, there's nothing in the expression that says that you can't follow the word Bushes with an E and an S. Uh, so that's the use of the question mark to mark optional characters. Um, so I, I'm sorry. I talked. Sorry, I talked about how uh, the uh, period here is escaped, so you can you, so it can be matched as a literal period. So the the asterisk of the star uh, and the plus signs are special meta characters that indicate uh, repetition, and so uh, usually they're they're added after a certain meta character or a certain literal, which and they're meant to mean I'm going to repeat whatever precedes me uh, any number of times. Um, so the star means I'm going to repeat the thing that that precedes me any number of times, including no times uh, at all. And the plus sign means I'm going to repeat what precedes me at least one um, at least one time. So for example, if I say dot star, uh, that means I, I I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for a dot. Uh, so the dot represents any character, and then I'm going to repeat it um, any number of times, including no times. Right. So dot star will match. Uh, all of these lines of text here. So, um, and so in particular, it's going to—it's looking for parentheses, um, and then followed by anything, and then followed by a closed parenthesis. So here, in the first line, I've got 24 comma m comma Germany uh, in parentheses. I've got, uh, and then the second line, I've got East Area plus Drive plus Webcam in parentheses. And look in the last line, I've, I've just got two sets of parentheses uh, with nothing in them, and that's okay because the the dot can match nothing. And the star can can repeat it any number of times, including no times. So the so the the fourth line of text here has nothing repeated no times, and so that matches the expression. Um, so here, um, this is a slightly more complicated expression. So let's go through it carefully. Uh, I've got a character class here indicated zero through nine, um, and then I've got a plus next to it, and so that means I can the, uh, the character class can be repeated. Um, at least one time. So there has to be at least one number um, from this character class uh, repeated, uh, then followed by space, uh, and then followed by um, dot star. And so the dot star means anything, really, uh, repeated any number of times, and then followed by the character class 0 through 9 repeated at least one time. So what does that match? Well, the first line here, um, I've got 720. So I got a, and then I, so I've got 720 followed by space, followed by this MP battalion comma, uh, and then space, and then 42. So that matches the patterns. So I've got a, a, I got a set of digits followed by a space, followed by anything, followed by a set of digits, and then, and that's it. So that's the pattern. Uh, so you can see all of these lines of text will match this pattern um, uh, that we have. 
So the curly braces can be used to, to uh, identify interval quantifiers. So for example, if you want to do something between a certain number of t one number and another number of times, uh, so you can specify the minimum and maximum number of matches for an expression. So, so let's take a look at this expression, which looks very complicated, but it's so we'll break it down. So the first part of the expression is the word bush, and the B is in a character class, so it can be uppercase or lowercase. And then followed by, and you can ignore the parentheses for now, um, but you, so, so followed by a space, which may be repeated more than one, uh, one or more times. Uh, followed by, and then I've got a caret in a space. So the caret, remember, inside the brackets means the negation. So that, so I'm going to have a space followed by something that's not a space, and and whatever that something is not a space can be repeated at least one time, and then followed by a space repeated at least one time, and then that whole thing can be repeated between one and five times. Um, so what does that mean? And then followed by a space and followed by the word debate. So what does that mean? That means, so the thing I've got in parentheses here is a space, uh, at least one space, followed by something that's not a space at least one time, followed by a space. Um, and so essentially that's uh, you, what you might think of as a word. It's a space followed by something that's a non-space followed by a space. It's a word. And so what this is saying is that I'm going to look for the word bush followed by between one and five words. Um, and then the word debate. So you can see the first line here, it says bush, and then somewhere down the line you see the word debate. And then in between you have the pattern has, and then space has space, and then space historically space, and then space one space, space all space, and then space major space. Right, so that's that pattern repeated five times. Um, and so you can look at all of these lines here, and it's always the word bush, followed by a couple different words, and then and then ending with the word debate, or maybe not ending, but followed by the word debate. And so that's a way to specify a variable number of repetitions um, in a in a in a regular expression using the curly braces. Uh, the curly braces don't always have to have two numbers. If you have two numbers in them, that means uh, that means you want to you want to range between the number m and the number n. Uh, if you just have one number, that means you want to you want to match it exactly that many times. And if you have a number with a comma but no second number, that means you want to match it at least that many times. So in most implementations of regular expressions, uh, you can use the parentheses to limit the to um, to limit the scope of alternatives divided by the solidus or the pipe. Um, it can also be used to remember text in a literal in a regular expression, and so these are sometimes called parenthesized sub-expressions, uh, and this can be very powerful when you uh, to make very kind of interesting regular expressions, and then you can match those parenthesized sub-expressions with the backslash one or the backslash two. So let's take a look at this expression right here. So what is this doing? So the first thing it does is it has a space with a plus after it. So, so the space with the plus means I want to look for at least one space. And then I've got parentheses, parentheses and then inside the parentheses sub-expression, I've got this character class, which is a to z lowercase or a to z uppercase. So any combination of characters uh, repeated at least one time. So basically any combination of characters, uppercase or lowercase. Um, and then followed by a space with a plus, so at least one space. And then followed by this backslash one, and so the backslash one basically says put in here whatever was in the parenthesized expression. So essentially, just repeat it again, and then follow it with a space uh, with and a plus, so at least one space. So basically, what this saying, what this expression is finding, is is it's finding a it's finding instances where you have a a set of characters a to z, and then they're repeated twice, right? So if you look at the first line, it'll, it says time for bed, night, night. So the word night matches the expression, and then it just repeats it right after that. So that's where the backslash one comes in. Same with blah, blah, and same with so, so. Uh, same with all, all, and anybody, anybody, or CSS, CSS, right? So these are, all, so this expression finds instances where any word is repeated. So notice that it doesn't look for a specific word to be repeated. It, it looks for any word to be repeated. And that's and the, in order to do that, you have to use these this backslash one, this back reference type of approach, because you're not you don't know what the pattern is going to match in advance. And so you you just say, okay, well whatever it matched, just repeat it again. 
So I want to talk one a little bit about the star meta character because it has a special behavior in the sense in that it's greedy. So the star will always match the longest possible string uh, that satisfies the regular expression. So take a look at this regular expression here, which is a caret s, and followed by a dot star, and then followed by an s. So what this what this regular, regular expression is saying is I want to start the the string with an s a lowercase s, and then follow it with anything repeated any number of times, including zero times, and then end it with, and then, and then followed by an s. Right? So what does this expression match? Well, it matches all of these lines of text here. Now, if you look at the first one, for example, you'll, show that you see, you'll see that it starts with an s, and it's just sitting at Starbucks. And so the word Starbucks actually has an s in the beginning, uh, but that's not where the match ends. The match actually goes all the way to the end of the line because the regular expression will, will find the longest possible string that satisfies the match. So it could have stopped at the first S in Starbucks, but actually it goes to the last S, and that's the entire match. Same with setting up MySQL and Rails. This, it starts with S, so it's fine. Setting up, now it could have ended with the, uh, the S in MySQL, but it will go all the way to the end uh, of, the, of the word Rails. And so the, the, the star uh, meta character is greedy in the sense that it will always look for the longest possible string that still satisfies the, the regular expression. And there's a way to turn this off, this behavior off, uh, by using the question mark. So if I use the same expression here, and uh, I say, but I say dot star question mark, what the question mark does here um, is it says it tells the star uh, meta character to be lazy. It makes and so instead of finding the longest possible match uh, string that matches the regular expression, it it will find the first possible string that matches the regular expression. So basically the shortest one. And so this will this will we'll see how this works in the next lecture uh, in terms of what it will match and what strings it will produce. So that's a very brief overview of regular expressions. Uh, there are, of course, whole books written about this topic, uh, and I haven't had a chance to really cover, to, to do more than really just scratch the surface. But I think some of the things that we've talked about here can be very useful when you're uh, processing text information and trying to create useful data from text files. Uh, and so just to summarize here, regular expressions are, are used in many different languages. They're definitely not unique to R. For, um, and, uh, and basically, regular expressions are composed of combinations of literals uh, and meta characters that, resents, that represent sets or classes of characters and words. Uh, and, and it's important to realize that text processing using regular expressions is a very powerful way to extract data from sources that are kind of not friendly, for example, for, from websites uh, or from just from other from text files that are messy or they're not properly formatted. And it's important to realize that not all useful data comes in the form of a, nice, of a nicely formatted CSV file. Uh, so in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about the functions in R that can be used to process regular expressions. And I'll have an example data set there that we can, that we'll that we'll use to process text and get some data out of.